Welcome to my workshop about Kathera AI on the Open3D engine. My name is Fabio Andrek. I am the, an AI developer at Kathera AI and the lead developer of our O3DE gem. I was also involved in the initial port of the O3D editor to Linux. What is Kathera AI? Kathera AI is the complete AI solution for games. It provides ground and flight navigation, including navmesh generation, octree generation for flight, multiple avoidance implementation, uh, implementations and formations for agents. And it has also some cool extra tools like navmesh pruning. Agent behaviors can be defined with behavior trees and state machines. We provide automatic markup of levels for cover and for navigation links, so agents can jump over chasms or climb up a ladder. Normally, a level designer has to place those cover and navigation links manually. With automatic markup, we can generate those links from the level geometry. We have a bunch of advanced debugging features. I will show you some of them later on. Our middleware is cross-platform, so it works on Windows, Mac, Linux, mobile platforms and consoles. It is also engine agnostic, which means new features developed for one engine are also available on all, all, all the other engines we support, with only a little integration work necessary. Apart from Open3D Engine, we support Lumbriart, CryEngine, Unreal Engine and soon Unity. Our middleware can also be integrated with custom engines. Here is a selection of games that have used Kythea AI, showing the wide range of engines, genres and platforms we support. We are working on quite a few more, including a few AAA games, but we sadly can't talk about them because they are under NDA. Let's highlight a few. First, we have Volsion Lords of Mayhem. If you like Diablo-like ARPGs, Volsion might be something for you. It sat at the top of the Steam top seller charts for more than a week. We implemented quite a few features for Volsion, including 2D formations, which I will show you later on. The next game is Mad World, an AI-driven mobile action strategy game set in a dystopian world. Carbonated Studios are a longtime Lumbriart partner and a founding member and champion of O3DE. And finally, we have Deadhouse Sonata by Apocalypse Studios. We have been working with them closely for quite some time and we expect Deadhouse Sonata to be one of the first big games released on O3DE. Cathera AI on Open3D Engine we already have an existing gem for Lumbriart that we ported over to O3DE. That meant mostly replacing calls to deprecated or removed APIs with new code. The gem supports both the main and development branch of the engine. The development branch is moving quite fast, so sometimes you might have to go back a few commits on it to get our gem working. For the Open3D engine gem release, we introduce a new licensing model. It is free for non-commercial use. If you are a small indie development team building a game, we have a royalties-based payment model where you pay a percentage of your revenue instead of a flat fee upfront. Our existing flat fee model is still available with Open3D Engine. Today's workshop. In today's workshop, we are going to create a simple level and in that set up a navigation mesh, also called a nav mesh and add an agent and define the behavior of that agent with a behavior tree. And I will also show you some of our advanced debugging tools. Let's get started with the workshop. First, we have to download our gem from our website. That is Cathera AI slash O3DE. Down here, you have a download now button. Um, and there is a quick form you have to fill out so we can send you the download link via email. And here is the email you will receive. It contains a link to a Google Drive folder, which always contains the latest version of the gem and also the older versions if you need one of them. Next, let's create our Open3D Engine project. For the gem to show up in the 
OCD project manager, we have to register the newly extracted gem into the project. To do that, we go to the installation of the Open3D and open a PowerShell command prompt. Here we have to use the scripts, o3de.bat script. You probably have used that to register the engine when you installed it. Now we are going to use it in, to register our gem to our project. If we look at the register command, you can see there are two options we want to use. One is a gem path, because we want to register a gem, and also uh, external, su external subdirectory project path for our project. So we are going to do register and then GP, and that is our gem path that we have just extracted to here. And the next one is ESPP, and that is our project path. And that is it. What this command actually does is adding a line in the project.json, as you can see here, with an external subdirectory to additional gems. Now we can go to the project settings, configure gems, and search for Cathera. And here we can activate it, and then go back and save to settings. Now we can build the project. And that is it. With that, we can open the editor. And here we are in the editor. First, let's create a new level. Uh, let's get rid of the shader ball. We won't use that. So let's place a few entities. Let's start with a simple box. We can use a mesh from the engine itself. Uh, primitive assets, there we have a box. Let's make it a bit bigger. Then maybe we can add another box. But this time we can make a ramp. Um, I'm using the non-uniform scale, so we can make it a long box. And let's make it a bit wider too, and even longer. Now we can also rotate it a bit. So we have something like a ramp. Cool, let's duplicate that, so we can build a ramp in the other direction. Something like that. And last, let's add a cylinder. Make sure it doesn't fly in the air and make it bigger. Okay, I think that's a good start for our test level. One thing that is needed so we can generate nav mesh from our level is physics colliders. So first let's activate the viewport helpers so we can see the physics colliders. 
Let's add uh, physics colliders on our grid first. We are going to use a simple box collider and increase the dimension of that so it encompasses the whole level. Okay, next we have the box. Here we can also just add a collider. And because the box is a predefined model that already has a 3D box collider in it, we don't have to configure anything. It will just load the physics collider stuff from the physics asset that's associated with the box. Just repeat that with the other ones. And finally, the cylinder. Next, we can define where we actually want the nav mesh to be generated. For that, we create a nav bounds entity and add the Cathera nav bounds component. Uh, to define the region, the nav bounds requires a polygon prism shape. We can edit that shape and maybe first move it in the center of the level more or less. Then we can edit the shape. Again, it's helpful to have the viewport helpers active so we can actually see where the prism will show up. We also increase the height a bit. And now let's check that it's not flying in the air, but it's actually touching the level. That is it. One thing we still need is a configuration file for the nav mesh. The best way to get the configuration file syntax right is to go to the official documentation page and copy it from there. So we go to the get started and search for Kythera and there our 2D navigation tutorial should show up with the configuration file for the nav mesh. The configuration file should go into our projects folder and here uh, create a new folder called scripts and there we create a new file called navmesh.xml Let's get over this quickly. We have we define a nav mesh names and an actual nav mesh type. So we have a nav mesh called default which has a nav mesh type called medium size characters. The medium size character is defined here. Um, it defines different uh, agent parameters, for example, its height, its max climb and max slope. So how, how big of the slopes an agent can go up. This influences how the nav mesh is generated. The agent radius, so there is enough space around corners so the uh, agent can actually go around and a few other parameters that influence how the nav mesh is generated. Now we can go back into the editor and generate our nav mesh. We won't see anything just yet, but we can activate the debug draw and here we are. That is our nav mesh generated from our level. So what is actually a nav mesh? As you can see here with our default debug draw, we can switch that over to color polygons. You can see the nav mesh is made up of polygons, of 2D polygons to be correct. So the uh, nav mesh is a data structure uh, containing two important parts. One are those polygons you can see here. And the other one is connections between those polygons. If we switch over to links, we can see all those polygons are connected to each other. 
they are connected in such a way that we can generate a graph data structure from those connections and then use that graph data structure to do nav path finding inside the graph. So if we have an agent that is up here and wants to go over here, he can then use these connections between the polygons, which are actually uh, graph connections, to find a way over here by using a common graph finding uh, algorithm like A star. Now that we have a working nav mesh, we can create our first agent. Let's use a mesh that's part of the engine. And it's called Lucy. Let's also give Lucy a material. And here she is. Now that we have created Lucy, we can start giving her some intelligence. To do that, the first thing you have to do is add a Cathera component. The Cathera component registers an entity with the Cathera system. To actually give her intelligence, we also need the agent component. An agent component is referencing a profile. Let's call ours Wonder Profile. A Wonder Profile, or the profiles in general, are defined with XML similar to the nav mesh. So let's go back to the documentation and copy our example profile. We go into our scripts directory again. Let's create a new file, profiles.xml. And now you can see we have a list of profiles. We have our wonder profile with a few settings. Um, we want ground navigation. That means um, the nation can move around on the nav mesh and do pathfinding. It has ground, ground avoidance, so it can avoid other agents. Um, it has movement, so it communicates with the engine and tells the engine where it actually wants to move. And we have behavior trees. The default behavior tree we want to execute is also defined here, and we call it wonder profile. Back in the engine, the uh, thing we have to do is reload those profiles back into the engine. This, this is done with the console command kit load profiles. Okay, now that we have defined our profile and defined the reference to a behavior tree, we can actually define this behavior tree. For that, we have to go into Cathera Inspector. It's the first icon on the Cathera toolbar. If we go to the BT Editor tab, we can create our behavior tree. A uh, behavior tree is a way to define how an agent should react to different systems and inputs. So let's get started to build a simple one. The first node we have is a repeater node. A repeater node is something similar to a while loop in a programming language. It has a predefined, it runs a predefined number of iterations, and because we have set it to zero, it will just repeat endlessly. The next node we want to add is a sequence node. A sequence node will just run whatever node that comes below it, um, one after another, and then ends. Because the sequence node is attached to the repeat node, it will then start again. What you now want is to find a random point in range. That should be on the nav mesh. So we connect it to the sequence node and then define the range. So we want to find random points in the radius of 100 meters around the agent. The output of that node we want to write into a variable, which we call my point. So this is similar to a function call in a, in a programming language. It has inputs and it can have multiple outputs and we define into which variable that output should be written. The next thing is, now that we have found a random point in range, we want to actually go to this point. For that, we can use the character go to node. We again connect it to the sequence node 
and now we can reference the destination. In our case, that's the my point variable we have created in the node before it. And we define the speed, that's meters per second, let's use five. Now we can go back to the engine or the editor and see if it works. And it does not. The reason for that is we have defined how Cathera should interact with the entity and what profile it should run and what kind of behavior tree it should run. But what you haven't done is how Cathera should communicate back to the engine how to actually move an agent. For that, we need the simple movement controller and the simple movement controller needs another agent that's the physics character controller. So those, those two components make sure that the commands the Cathera calculates, for example, where an agent should move, is communicated to the engine. Let's try again. And here we have a moving Lucy. Another debug draw we can activate is navpaths. And let's deactivate the navmesh debug draw. Here we can see the path that Cathera is calculating and then Lucy is following that path. Obviously, it's only she's only using the nav mesh and not going through random stuff like the box or the collider, the anything else that's excluded by a collider. One thing you might have noticed if you look at how Lucy is moving around, she isn't really going up the ramp. So let's try to change that. For that, let's create a point of interest entity. Uh, let's just use a mesh from the engine again. There should be a sphere. Yes, there is. And give it a material. And place it at the top of the ramp. And make it a bit smaller. Okay, and what we can do now again is use the Cathera component and define a tag. Uh, let's say point of interest. Next, we can go back to the behavior tree and extend it. So let's do something a bit more interesting. Um, let's again, we want to repeat what we have been doing here. Um, so let's disconnect this one, connect it to here. So we want to repeat this three times. And after that, we do want to do something else. And what we want to do is go to this point of interest. So actually what we want to do is attach the top most repeater to the sequence node and then the sequence node to the repeater. And now we can find entities with tags and we can just find nearest entity with tag. So we get only one entity because we only really have one. Uh, the tag we have defined, we called POI and the entity ID is the output, and so let's call it my POI. And again, what we now can do is use the character go to node again. The destination is my POI, and speed is again 5. And let's see if it works. So Lucy will go to three random points and then go to the point of interest. Then again, go to three random points. And then to the point of interest. It seems to work. One cool debugging feature of Cathera is the live behavior tree view. 
if we go to the live tab and select our um, agent, we can see what current behavior tree node is executed. As you can see right now, it's a correct go to node. And then for a very quick um, point in time, the correct random point in range is active. Now again, random point in range, and we are back to the correct go to node. Now we have executed the random point in range three times, so we are going over to the find nearest entity attacks. It has been active only for one frame because it's a very quick operation, and now we are in the character go to node again. We also have the variable monitor back down here where you can see the values of the variables. For my point, that is uh, coordinates. And for my POI, it's the ID of the Cathera entity. Right now, Lucy is our only agent in the level. Let's change that. First, let's just duplicate her and move her away a bit. And let's also change the material so we can actually tell those two apart. Okay, next we would ha like to, let's first rename it to Chaser. Um, and we also want to use a separate profile and a separate behavior tree. So let's say we want a Chaser profile. So what we actually want to do is that the new Lucy uh, follows the old one or tries to chase her. So another thing we have to do first before we can start building the behavior tree is give Lucy a tag so we can actually look her up and find her. So similar to the point of interest we have put up on the top of the ramp. So just let's say Lucy as a tag. Okay, next what we have to do is update the profiles and add a second profile. So here we called it chaser profile, so we have to call it the same here. And we also define the name of the behavior tree. Let's say chaser behavior. Now let's go back into the inspector and build this behavior. a new behavior tree and we have called it behave chaser behavior okay the basic setup is the same we have a repeater node at the top and then we have a sequence node next and what we then want we have defined or given lucy a tag so we want to find uh, an entity with this tag and we can use the find nearest entity with tags. Uh, the tag is called Lucy and the output should be Lucy ID. And again, we can use the correct go to node to actually go to Lucy. Again, we have Lucy ID and speed should be a bit higher than Lucy so we can actually uh, close in to her. Because we have changed the profile, we have to reload the profiles again with the git load profiles command. And now we should have a chasing Lucy. So, yeah. Chaser ch chases after Lucy, and that's a bit weird. So let's make a small change to the behavior tree um, so that the chaser goes away a bit and then tries again to chase Lucy. So we can do something really similar than before. Um, just find a random point in range. Let's say 50 meters. Again, my point as the variable. And then the familiar go to node. 
using the destination point and the speed. And we are back and we have the chaser going away a bit and then chasing Lucy again. As you can see, the navigation path is updating dynamically depending on the position of the entity that is chased. Now that we have an interesting scene with two agents following each other, we can look at the debug options that Cathero provides. Uh, you can find them in the inspector in the global blackboard. Um, one are, most of them are in console variables and debug options. Let's take a quick look in the console variables. Um, one of the first is draw master that just activates or deactivates all debug draw globally. And the other one is draw nav mesh. So if we activate master and say draw nav mesh and set it to four, four should be a colorful polygons, yes. So this drop down is mapped to those values here. As you can see, it's now set back to one. There are quite a few other options you can try, but um, we also have debug options. Debug options are more for agents than global options like console variables. For example, what we already have active, as you can see, are the name of the agent, which is here. So if we deactivate it, those are gone. Other things we can take a look at, for example, is request move. As you can see, that draws, let's deactivate the nav mesh, uh, draws the requested direction of a move. So it shows the request Kythera sends to the engine to where it wants to move the agent. Something similar is rig speed, which tells the engine at what speed the agent should move. As you can see, and when it goes to the end of a nav path, it slows down a bit. So it doesn't go uh, full speed until the end, but it slows down at the end of the nav path. One thing to note is those are the global options. So if we deactivate it again, um, you can see we also have two blackboards for the entities. So for example, we can just go to uh, the agent name, debugging, debug draw, and then go to name and activate it here. And then we have the name only active for one of the agent. One thing to note, if you change debug set, uh, global debug uh, options, let's say the name again, we activate that both and you say save debug options, those get saved into a file and will be uh, back again when you load the level again or when you restart the editor. If you want to have the same console variables on every startup of the editor, you can put them into the projects folder game.cfg file. Um, as an example, I set draw master to on and uh, draw nav mesh to four. This concludes the hands-on workshop for today, but I'd like to show you a few more features in Cathera AI that are already available today in Open3D Engine. One of the systems that's already available in O3DE and will get documentation soon is Perception. This system allows agents to perceive the world they are in and react to it. We currently have four three predefined perception types. The first is visual. You can think of it as the eyes of the agent. This type uses raycasts to check if a target is in line of sight. Next is audio. It uses a radius around a sound event, for example a weapon shot, to check if an agent could perceive that event. We also have tactile. This is used for collision events like weapon hits or explosions. And finally the group type, which can be used to inform other members of a group about the target. Let's look at a simple example of visual perception. The lines are representing raycasts to check if the agent on the left can see the agent on the right. The agent can see the other agent only when it's in, the, in its field of view and not obscured by something else. 
If the target is no longer perceived, the agent will remember the last position of the target for a short while before forgetting about it. In our workshop, we showed you ground navigation. Kythera AI also supports flight navigation. This is a video from Kythera city level that is part of the gem download. Flight navigation works in a similar way to what I have showed you for ground navigation. Instead of a nav mesh, we generate an oak tree, which represents the empty space a ship can fly in. This type of navigation also works great for submarines, as you can see in the game Aquanox Deep Descent, which uses this technology. The control of the ships is also done with behavior trees, this time using ship go to instead of character go to node. The documentation for all behavior tree nodes is also in the documentation. You should find it by searching for behavior tree nodes. You can also define your own behavior tree nodes with C++, for example, to allow your agents to cast spells or fire weapons. A cool addition for CT flight are splines. Normal flight navigation uses pathfinding through empty space to find a way to the ship to fly. But sometimes you want to predefine exactly how your ship flies through the, your level. For that, you can use a spline. A spline is defined by multiple points in 3D space. Fancy Math then creates a nice interpolation between those points to make the flight look natural. On every point on a spline, you can define additional parameters, like influencing how this interpolation math works, the orientation of the ship and the speed of the ship. A ship flying along a spline will still take physics constraints into account. For example, a massive ship can't fly tight curves at high speed. A feature that is already available in OpenCV Engine is our Spatial Query System. This is a scene from Wilson Lords of Mayhem where we use this system. Let's see what's going on here. The Spatial Query System is, as the name says, um, a system to find points in the nav mesh. Um, the points can be filtered in many different ways. For example, here we implemented a feature where an enemy in the game is trying to avoid damage zones put down by the player. The enemy can avoid these points by moving uh, left or right from his current position. So we just first generate uh, uh, points in a grid around the enemy. But because the enemy can only move left or right, we have to limit the points to his left and right side. So all the red and green points are actually points that can be used by the ability by the enemy. Next, we obviously don't want the enemy to go from one damage zone in the next one. So we exclude all the points that are inside a damage zone. Th those are these ones. Next, we are going to choose one point at random and this is the green one. So what happens is we find a point and the uh, enemy can use that ability and move out of the damage zone without going in into another damage zone. Roadmap for Kythera AI on O3DE. As you've seen in the workshop, it's quite complicated to download and install the gem. We want to simplify this process and ideally make the gem available directly from the project manager. We also want to integrate more features, one of which I will show you in a second. 
and we also want to create demo levels to show off those features and plan to add much more documentation for those. But most importantly, we want to hear your feedback on what features you want, bugs you might have encountered and where the documentation is still lacking. Another cool feature that we implemented for Wilson Lords of Mayhem is 2D formations. In this, a group of 2D agents can merge together and form a formation. Formations can also split up and join together if there isn't enough space to go around. If agents inside the formation are killed, the formation automatically rearranges itself so it gets a nice clean formation again. Formations also work for ranged attackers as you can see here. And as I said before, bigger formations will split up to go around big obstacle and then join back together. We plan to release this feature on Open3D Engine soon and are already working on the documentation and demo levels. We are hiring! We are looking for C++ developers to work on our core roadmap, which includes the O3DE gem. We are also looking for C-Sharp developers and Unity experts to work on our new Unity integration. In addition, we'd like to hire another level designer to build demo levels for O3DE and other engines. Also, a technical marketer to help us explain all those new features and how you can use them in your own game. That is it for today. Join our forum at forums.kythera.ai to ask questions and show us the cool things you have built with Kythera. I am also active in the official O3DE Discord, mostly idling in the SICK content channel. Thanks for watching!